Hello, and welcome to coverage of the first EVA around Titan Station. And on this EVA, Bill and Bob Kerman will check out some of the station's systems and then make their way across to the research lab on the opposite side of the station. The science laboratory that was provided by Zephram Cochran's Warp Supplies Company uh, is isolated from the rest of the station. There is no way to reach it through the station itself and that's for safety reasons to ensure that any contamination will be isolated to that wing of the station. Of course the science laboratory is going to be the center of nuclear research and also research into exotic particles such as antimatter and so it was necessary for the safety of the crew to make sure that it was easy to jettison that section and seal it off quickly. Camera robots have been deployed around the station to provide various views. They essentially have enough thrust to reach their station location, their location around the station, and then return their very small little objects and so that will provide us with some of the better views. This is the on-station camera and so we will also be able to use this camera to see what the Kerbals are doing around the station. The main goal of this, aside from reaching the science laboratory for Bill and Bob, are, is to check out the docking security and also the hydraulic and electrical connections on the solar panels especially to make sure that the hydraulic systems are totally functional. So um, those of course uh, um, we will be uh, getting static occasionally as we switch cameras sometimes and uh, here we have one of the robotic cameras outside the station showing us that uh, Bill Kerman, Bill Kerman has emerged from the from the airlock and uh, here we can see him from the station camera here. He's waiting for waiting for clearance to uh, proceed with his duties. Bill Kerman was of course the pilot on the mission up, uh, though of course uh, Jebediah Kerman took primary control in his capacity of commander, but Bill Kerman is reputedly one of the more uh, outgoing of the Kerbals involved in the space program. So it's no surprise that he would be the first one out on EVA here. Bob Kerman is still in the airlock getting uh, getting properly situated. Here we see Bill slowly making his way first to the central docking hub of the station, the 3.75 meter dual purpose docking rings provided by KW Rocketry. Aside from uh, those docking rings, KW Rocketry also provided the flat adapters uh, to adapt between the 3.75 meter parts and the 2.5 meter parts on the station and also some of the batteries were provided by KW Rocketry as well. The central docking ring is not passable. It, uh, there is no way for the Kerbals to go through it. It is simply a structural component of the station. And so Bill is reporting on its condition. Sounds like everything is good on the docking ring. No, no huge surprises there. There was always the possibility that some debris might have struck it and uh, damaged uh, part, and that wasn't obvious from the internal systems. So a visual inspection is helpful. This is only a cursory visual inspection, of course. Uh, There could be more detailed visual inspections scheduled later on if this EVA goes sufficiently well in the allotted time. 
This is really the first experience for EVing around the station, so mission coordinators didn't want to rush things, making sure that the schedule was sufficiently free and that the EVA was also relatively short. Okay, Bill Kerman is now proceeding on, making his way down the station. Currently passing over the east coast of Africa here. You can see Lake Victoria right behind the the resupplier, the Calypso resupplier vessel. After Bill Kerman is satisfied that he's got a decent look at things, he will attempt to grab onto that ladder that goes to the top of the solar array. Doesn't look like he's heading for it just yet. He had a question for Bob. He doesn't know if something is correct or not. Uh, Bob uh, says that uh, he'll take a look at it as he uh, comes out of the airlock. Bob is, of course, the science specialist on the mission. Uh, and uh, he has a much better sense of the layout of the station than Bill does. Bill, however, is far more experienced on these sorts of EVAs. Looks like uh, Bill is now moving towards the ladder. Yeah, he's uh, planning to head up to the solar panel hydraulic systems. Mission control confirms. This is the view from one of the robotic cameras. That was just Bill commenting on the view at this point. And uh, Bill now has the ladder in his grips. He's going to head down first. And it sounds like Bob is ready to emerge from the airlock. But first we see Bill here heading up up the ladder to the top of the assembly, the Solar Truss L1. There's special The special concern about the parts that were found lying by the side of the road, and so Bill will be taking a look at those. Of course, no, no special engineering ability is necessary to make sure those are still functioning. Uh, so, just making sure that they're still intact will be sufficient. Some of the docking ports... Uh, uh, we're switching cameras here. Uh, uh, it's uh, the emergence of Bob Kerman now. Bob Kerman is now out of the airlock. 
Waiting for clearance to begin his move up. Mission Control wants to make sure their vital steins are all stable before they start maneuvering around the station, and it looks like Bob is free. Bob is heading over to the the spot that Bill had mentioned. It sounds like uh, everything is all right. No. No concerns about the situation. It uh, seems to be something about the area between the docking port assemblage and the tank there, the one wrapped in gold foil. But, uh, and uh, between those, there is the computer core, one of the many computer cores. Well, on the station, so Bill had been a little bit concerned about the look of it, and uh, Bob reassures him that everything's all right on that. So now Bob will head to the opposite side of the L1 truss, and he will also grab onto the ladder there and make his way up. He's uh, taking his time to get around the L1 truss, of course. While specially trained for this, naturally, uh, Bob is still a little bit unsure of himself in terms of uh, the EVAs and wants to take it slow. Uh, I think that was Jeb telling him to hurry up, actually. Jeb, of course, uh, is busy doing simulations of the Saturn C3X launch, and uh, even though he probably will not be in control of the first mission, first manned mission on the top of the Saturn C3X, uh, he is eager to be ready to take control of that rocket manually uh, should some computer system fail. And so he is preparing for that eventuality. As we see, Bob Kerman get a hold of, uh, uh, get a hold of the ladder here and make his way up the truss yeah we can see uh, Bill Kerman on the opposite side of the truss uh, currently taking a look at the uh, systems readouts on the panel there Uh, Bill says everything looks good to him, but no, no real certainty there. Bob, of course, won't be content that everything is all right until he takes a look at the at the situation himself. And so they're heading up to the top of the truss to check out the hydraulic situations. And also the electrical couplings. And so both uh, Bill and Bob Kerman are working at the top of the L1 truss to ensure that the solar panels are properly integrated into the station. 
that their ability to turn to face the sun is intact. And that, and that there's no uh, coolant issue, and uh, and it looks like uh, Bob is already satisfied. So Bob is making his way down. It was already prearranged that Bob will be the first to end his EVA. And he's going to be heading to the science laboratory. There was some concern about having Bill and Bob Curran be the lab specialists on this. And uh, after all, while Bob is uh, well trained in uh, scientific fields, numerous scientific fields according to the EDB, uh, Bill Kerman uh, is notoriously clumsy. Uh, Jebediah Kerman fielded questions on this in a press conference. Uh, he said Bill and Bob couldn't possibly be worse than uh, Beaker or Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. When it was pointed out to him that the Muppets were not, in fact, a real lab assistant and scientist, uh, he simply smiled and then went on to the next question. So I suppose uh, that's some consolation. Here, uh, here, Bob is actually looking like he's enjoying himself. This camera reorients here. Yes, indeed, uh, he seems to be... I, we can't really tell whether he's thrilled to be ending his EVA or actually just thrilled to be on it. Possibly both. Certainly while there's still business ahead, it's tough to enjoy yourself out there. Okay, and Bob Cameron is in the science laboratory now. Bill Kerman is making his way back down from the top of the L1 truss. So far, this EVA has been a success. Bob does note that there were some issues with the lighting on the station. But that that was somewhat to be expected anyway. That was not a concern of uh, mission control, or uh, or any of the specialists uh, that was anticipated. So. So so far, uh, Titan Station looks to be in good working order, and the next. Next module up to the station will probably be part of the research apparatus for the science lab. And that will almost certainly have to be launched by one of the larger launchers uh, and probably the Saturn C3X. Uh, nuclear reactors, of course, tend to be rather large and heavy. So, so yes, so it will probably be the Saturn C3X to deliver the next module to the station, and that will happen after its test. Still no word on what the exact payload for the test is. It is not going to be a new module for the station, however. So, uh, here we go, Bill making his way around the truss to get to the opposite side of the station. It's unclear what the safety protocols for the science laboratory actually are in terms of uh, the Kerbals who are working inside of it. That is, whether they sh would uh, rapidly EVA, try to get through the airlock quickly, or whether they would be stranded with the contaminated material. It's possible that they would have to be quarantined and uh, they might be risking their lives on this research.
I'm not entirely sure anybody has told Bob that yet, but uh, uh, I'm sure nobody bothered to withhold any such information from Bill. Uh, Bob tends to be a little bit more nervous about such things. To be sure, I'm, we can at least be confident that Bob will take every precaution that things are safe. He is not prone to be lax on those points. And here we go. Uh, Bill is now maneuvering self, himself to the airlock. Okay, and Bill is now in. Uh, this is uh, Jebediah Kerman's view. He is. He's currently alone in the hitchhiker storage container, the PPD 10. A very expensive module. Speaking of expense, as we turn to. Bill and Bob in their new science laboratory. Of course, this laboratory came at a very affordable price thanks to a deal. Thanks to a deal from Zephyrin Kerman. And uh, there has been some consternation that this science laboratory might supplant the mobile processing lab on the opposite side of the station. Uh, which might go unused despite its 218, 218 million dollar price tag. So, yes, uh, as we could see from the interior of the science laboratory, Zephyrin Kerman uh, uh, certainly spared every expense, but um, whether it's a more successful module than the mobile processing lab is, uh, we can only wait to see. There has been word of some investigation about the supplier of the mobile processing lab integrated integrals and what led to their enormous contract to provide the most expensive module to the station even though it does not look like it's going to be used in the near future but uh, we'll leave those issues aside for now the EVA around Titan station the first EVA has been declared a success as both uh, Kerbals checked out the areas of the station that they were assigned to and made their way to the science laboratory successfully without any issues with their EVA suits or any other problems noted. This will no doubt encourage the EDB to schedule longer EVA sessions. Of course around the International Space Station the EVAs tend to take around six hours uh, Kerbals do not have that kind of attention span, unfortunately, so even a long EVA for a Kerbal would be about half an hour. But uh, more substantial EVAs are now considered to be likely, and probably more detailed EVAs in terms of the systems aboard the station than simply checking out uh, electrical couplings and that sort of thing. So we will look forward to those in the future. For now, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this coverage of the first EVA around Titan Station. And we hope you will join us for future missions from the EDB. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.